The arts make Calgary. Remember, those summers on the rolling lawns of Princess Island Park at the Calgary Folk Music Festival. Connect by bringing us all together for topical and shared experiences with the works like Enron at Theatre Calgary and Downstage Theatre's Good Fences. Prosper by attracting to and retaining in Calgary top talent in all industry sectors, including the energy sector. Excel by educating and challenging students of all ages to think and achieve creatively. Vote because there are over 9,000 arts and cultural workers in Calgary. My name is Paul Chambers, Arts Vote Calgary volunteer and one of those 9,000 cultural workers. Welcome to Arts Vote Calgary's Provincial Arts Election Forum at the Central Library in Calgary, a cultural capital of Canada, 2012. Two thousand twelve is not a starting point. We are celebrating many centennials this year and numerous arts and cultural organizations are celebrating milestone anniversaries. We will celebrate in two thousand twelve. Stay tuned for Calgary twenty twelve's press release, press launch next Wednesday at eleven o'clock at the Epcor Center. But perhaps more importantly, we can use this year to re engage and build. Today's forum is about the future of the arts. While it can be said that we have a healthy art sector now, we need to readdress policies and goals that will allow our arts to continue to thrive and adapt for all Albertans. Arts and culture cross all sectors and confront us daily. Today the candidates will be discussing a broad range of topics including affordable cities, education, direct and indirect funding, infrastructure, and the different needs of rural and urban constituencies. This next hour is to keep the arts and culture policy in the forefront of candidates and voters' minds during the election campaign. I want to thank our provincial M MLA candidates for joining us today, for giving of their time and ideas to continue this important conversation. I would also like to thank the Rosé Foundation for its continued support and our partner for this forum, the Calgary Public Library. To speak on their behalf, please welcome Gary Meek, Director of the Calgary Public Library. Uh, you know, does it get any better than this? It's a, it's a Friday afternoon, the uh, sun is shining. You're in one of my favorite places, Calgary Public Library. Yes, and we're here to talk about the arts. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. Great ideas begin with shared conversations, active listening, and rich and meaningful dialogue. Forms such as this are important and provide an opportunity to share, inform, and to learn. It also provides a unique and special opportunity to identify what matters to citizens and the key matters that make a difference in the life of our community. Calgary Public Library is excited to partner with Arts Vote Calgary to present the Arts Vote Calgary Election Forum. As a community catalyst and connector in our community since the opening of the Memorial Park Library in 1912, the Calgary Public Library is very proud of the role that we play in civic literacy, ensuring that Calgarians have access to the information and the opportunities they need to be informed and engaged citizens. Today's forum provides a unique opportunity for Calgarians to interact with local candidates provide valuable background information, and to ask questions about the important and vital role of arts and culture in our community. I look forward to the discussion. Thank you for coming, and thank you for making time to share your ideas and your thoughts with the audience today. So thank you, Paul. Arts for Calgary distributed specific art-specific surveys to the candidates in early March. You can see their responses posted on our website at artsvotecalgary.ca. If you're tweeting the forum, we're at artsvoteyyc, hashtag abvote. And finally, we're live streaming the forum, so you can please tweet out to your networks that they can find us at artsvotecalgary.ca. 
what would an arts forum be without art? I would like to welcome Calgary's Poet Laureate, Mr. Chris Demeanor. Chris is a multidisciplinary artist who has become a fixture of Calgary's spoken word, theater, and music communities. In words from a nomination letter, Chris is a skilled, passionate, and keenly insightful artist whose work is both accessible and deeply committed to an honest expression of what it is to be Calgarian. The Poet Laureate position is made possible by the Poet Laureate Poet Laureate Ambassadors, Calgary Foundation, the Calgary Chamber of Commerce, First Calgary Financial, First Energy Capital Corps, Hotel Arts, Trans Canada, and an anonymous donor. Chris? Thank you. Uh, so I've gone the route of the good natured roast. Today, um, but don't worry, all of the parties will be roasted evenly. <laughs> Think of it like, um, you know, a Burt Reynolds, Carol Burnett kind of celebrity roast where we're all friends. Um, and even, even the parties who aren't here or may no longer exist are, are here too. Raj, Len, Larry, Danielle, Brian, Allison, Edwin, Naomi, and Bruce were all on a plane with one parachute. There wasn't a danger but thought of disaster inspired the leaders to think of the reasons why they should be spared faster. As if the stakes of the contest below were not already sizzling and frothy, this was wild as the Conklin monster, the queasy suggestion that should the unthinkable bellow, their earthbound fellow wild rose-sniffing comrades in arms would need meaningful leading addressing the hopes of the holders of scalpels and chalk and piping and test tubes and plows, accounts in Caribbean tax havens, plastic bags full of all that they have in the world. A plan was unfurled to allow each one one phrase of inspiration, listen, rebut, debate the said quote, and submit to the hard truth of the vote one after another must reluctantly secede, so you think you can lead. There was pressure for decorum, composure amid the distress. There was press. A voice hurled a near-perfect pitch, good people, big ideas, better government, to which a mocking reply rose, switch the big and the better, make better all wet and you're close, but new ideas that put Albertans first. Now that's a dose of hope that satiates the thirst for change as we look forward into the, let's say, future. So, who's second then once we are first? And who's third and fourth and who's last? Who are we beating? I'm tired of us bleating. How somehow we're losing to a union we're choosing to be in. I believe I can best juggle the rights of the many, the needs of the few, because Alberta belongs to you. Who's you? The people. I'm people. It's unequal. You're either free radicals or glued to the fence. Get this. Common ground, common sense. Nothing makes more sense than the market. My sight's on the target. Steady, steady. Are you ready? Capitals are and you replacing the long form a la Prince or a large toy store. What exactly are we ready for, a skeptic implored. First class health care, affordable housing, a pristine environment, immediate separation gives Alberta back to Albertans. Preparation now for the best paradise this side of heaven. 23% agreed on QR 77. <laughs> are you serious? Oh, friends, you can talk platitudes of royalties, deficits, investments, gains. Really, you have nothing to lose but your chains. The assembled leaders could not believe that a Marxist had compelled them to consider chains, the chains of Ottawa around our wealth, the chains around the attempts at rebranding ourselves, the chains of personal debt ever present in our brains, the chains around the barriers that stop us when we don't know when to stop. And then they shook it off and lightened up. Okay, an insider tip. Real-life leadership. Proven, proven, sensible, workable. Yeah, I suppose real life beats virtual, but I'm not so sure anymore. I don't know, me neither. I'm exhausted. Anyone for a Caesar? And strangely, as the sun started setting on the rumble in the fuselage, and there was every indication that all would be left vital upon safe arrival, there was a lifting of weight, the chance to contemplate the message. When a candidate was singled out, 
to make their case, one who earlier had had no phrase at the ready encapsulating readiness, bigness, belonging, but now instead suggested the leaders while supping their Caesars silently slide up their blinds and look at the land. The ferocious beauty of day's dying color flooding the serene and struggling land. Where do we stand? Thank you. I have one more introduction, and I would like to welcome our moderator for this afternoon's forum, Mr. Russell Bowers. Russell has been a broadcast journalist for nearly 25 years. He's done over 10,000 interviews with political leaders, international stars, artisans, and the folks next door. He is the host of Daybreak Alberta on CBC Radio 1, which is the number one weekend morning show in Calgary. Each week, Russell speaks with artists and entertainers from across the province. His show reaches over 100,000 listeners throughout Alberta. Uh, how you doing? Are we excited? That's, uh, that's not bad. But it's the arts, ladies and gentlemen. Let them hear you at the, hear at the Palomino. Come on. Excellent. Much better. Well, you know, uh, good afternoon, candidates and the poet laureates, the Arts Vote Committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I have the prov privilege of getting up each morning for a radio show, uh, each weekend morning show at uh, 6 a.m. So my personal motto is the arts never sleeps. So I want to welcome you all here today because uh, the biggest challenge a lot of times in politics and voting is just showing up. Now, I want to start with a quote from the comedian Steve Coogan. And in his role as the clueless radio DJ Alan Partridge, he played a song, Big Yellow Taxi, by that honorary Albertan and indeed honorable Joni Mitchell. Now, in back selling the song, he mentions that Joni complains about paving paradise to put up a parking lot. And Alan says... This is a measure, of course, that would actually have alleviated the downtown congestion in the traffic core, something which Joni singularly fails to point out because it doesn't quite, quite fit in with her blinkered worldview. Nevertheless, good song. So it's a lot of times where the arts and other social and economic priorities often find themselves seemingly conflicted. Let's think about some of the great cities and countries of, the, of this planet. If I said London... Would thoughts of the Beatles, Shakespeare, or Ricky Gervais be far behind? America, the birthplace of jazz, beat poetry, and the Broadway stage. Then we have Egyptian history, Brazilian dance, French wine, German philosophy, Australian rules football. However, when our fellow Canadians are asked to name the things that come to mind about Calgary or Alberta, what do we hear from them? Oftentimes, it's four things, money, oil, jobs, and rednecks, rightly or wrongly. But now, to look at that, one way is to say that we're often associated with prosperity, and many would agree that's a useful thing. But Alberta is where Who Has Seen the Wind was written. It's the birthplace of W.P. Kinsella the, and the Bloody Caesar although I don't think those things are related. <laughs> it's the home of the greatest outdoor show on earth. And as a person who first moved to Alberta from the East Coast in 1995, I can also report that one of the most famous Newfoundland songs, Sonny's Dream, was written in a car in 1976 on Highway 2 between Calgary and Edmonton. So we're here today because arts matters to us. We have different ideas on how it should be paid for, produced, consumed, and funded. And if the local and world economy is telling us that times are tight, how much publicly and privately should we set aside for the matter of art? So if we're going to say something about our country or our city and our province to the world and the country, the arts must be part of that discussion. Too often we take arts and artists for granted. They're too often asked to perform for free or donate a piece of work to an event because it will be good exposure. But... Go downtown tonight here in this city, and in fact any night of the week, 
You can see world-class theater, view thought-provoking art, see comedy, hear music, buy a local novel from an independent bookshop, and have Alberta beef cooked to perfection. We don't often pick tourist destinations based on how many corporate headquarters a city has. We visit to see museums, music, and people. So instead of those four items that Canada tells us we are, I'd like to offer these four things that we can offer to come to people's minds about who Alberta is. The political freedom of Nellie McClung, the musical brilliance of Katie Lang, the hockey knowledge of Ron McLean, the wit and eloquence of Will Ferguson. As a start, maybe these could be Alberta's four strong winds. Now, before we begin, I just want to say a, a, a quick word about bravery. It's brave of the candidates to be here, to show your concern for the future of arts in this province. And while we may not change minds today, hopefully you as an audience will find a candidate or party that reflects your values about art. It's brave of you to be here, to stand up for art and to make your thoughts known and to show these people that the arts matters. And as the election campaign proceeds, you should know that it's what's important to these people on the stage, and they should know what's important to you. Because when the election is over, all these poor dears will have to go on is the popular vote and try working out those numbers. So let's hear how these candidates and parties plan to make our province arts rich. So I want to begin the discussion today by having each candidate take two minutes to outline their party's policy. And then we'll have some questions specific to the arts that we'll get into. So I want to start in order of their seating. And we'll start with David Swan from the Alberta Liberal Party. And he's the candidate for Calgary Mountain View. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank you, folks. Wonderful to be here with you. Uh, always interesting and challenging and important for us to get together and talk about what Alberta means to us, where we're going, uh, what we value. And I think Russell is right. It does take courage to care, to care about the future of the province, to do more than simply say you care, but think about it, speak about it, act on the values that we all say we share about this wonderful province that we've been bequeathed by chance. I want to give a shout out to the Calgary Public Libraries. They're also part of the same funding envelope that arts and culture receives. And I realized just how vital this place is when I tried to use the washroom today. <laughs> I've never had trouble getting into a male washroom, a little trouble getting into the female washrooms, but I've never had trouble getting into the male washroom except here. This place is jam packed. This is used by everyone. And it's wonderful to see the tremendous resource that it's become to all Albertans, especially those who are struggling to, to find a place. I also want to give a shout out to Chris Demeanor. He's the next Beethoven. I don't know if you noticed on the wall the, the statue of, of Beethoven. There are pictures around here because of the Beethoven concert coming up. The resemblance is absolutely stunning. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> I want you to work on the hair. I also have a very strong political message today, and that is that if Egypt can do it, there's hope for Alberta. Change is possible, even in Alberta. Politics is critical to our lives, and Albertans, to the tune of only 2 or 3 percent, are engaged in a political party. How are we going to make the best political decisions if only 2 or 3 percent of people are actually involved in the organizations that make the decisions about how we will live, who we will pay, who, who, who will pay, and what our future looks like. I see I'm already out of town, uh, time, and I'm going to have to uh, talk very briefly about light and heat. Politicians are like plants. We need light. We need you to turn on the light. And we also need the heat, the moral pressure to do the right thing for Albertans for the long term. Thank you. David Swan, thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Mark Power, and he is Alberta's new Democratic Party candidate for Calgary Clark. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, hosting this event. If nothing else gives me a chance to sit down for a few hours, uh, <laughs> I barely have feet left after 10 hours of knocking on doors. Um, I really wanted to say thank you for hosting. This is a really incredibly important issue. The arts are a fundamental good, 
And I think it's incredibly important that we address these issues because in the end, arts are about building community. And that's one of the things that I find in Calgary we sometimes seem to lack, is we don't seem to know each other well enough. And art gives you the opportunity to express yourself freely. You're often on the leading edge of change. And you see yesterday, we just saw cuts to our CBC and Telefilm and, and the film board. Why? Because the conservatives are afraid of change. And they do not appreciate art because it is about making a difference. And so the reality of the situation is we need a government that actually stands up with enthusiasm when it comes to artists. A government that sees artists as a fundamental good to our society. And so I have been running hard to lead change. Much like Mr. Swan, we are different parties, but we share the same you know, desire to see Alberta move forward. And I think you know, artists have been the people who aren't afraid to step outside the box. And we have to encourage that in every possible way. And we cannot be seeing cuts. You can't see cuts because cuts put the pressure on the artist. Our government has the capacity. We live in the wealthiest province and one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And to have to worry about artists having to feed themselves and to house themselves when these are the people who are driving our society forward. So I want to thank you. I look forward to telling you a little bit more about what I believe in, some more details about our party policy, but I will pass it on to my friend in the Alberta party. But thank you very much for everything. Just as a quick note, uh, just as in respect for the candidates, they do have a, a limited period of time today to speak. And so if you would like to show your appreciation for a point that uh, they made, just please save it for the end of, uh, of their time. Now we'll move on now to Kevin Warren, and he's, the, uh, he's with the Alberta Party, and he's the candidate for Calgary Popwood. Kevin. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, it's hard with the seven of us following the eloquence of uh, Mr. Demeanor. And, uh, to David's point, if you need some help with growing hair, Chris, uh, I'm all ears or at your service. I'd like to thank Arts Vogue Calgary for organizing this event and for letting me present the Alberta Party's cultural industries policies. First, you'll notice that we call it cultural industries. It's a recognition of value. It's not arts and crafts. Cultural industries are inseparable from the fabric of our communities, and many, myself included, make our living at them. I've been a performer, a technician, a promoter, and a producer. Cultural <laughs> industries pay my mortgage and support my family. The first thing the Alberta Party would do is increase funding for cultural industries by 20%. This represents less than one one hundredth of 1% 1 of the current provincial budget. And for every dollar invested in cultural industries, we've been told that the return is $12, according to the Alberta Foundation for the Arts. The Alberta Party would commit to fully funding and supporting the Alberta Multimedia Development Fund and revamping the incentives for production to ensure that we're competitive with other jurisdictions across North America. I had many friends who left this province when they closed down the film office. They went to other provinces. I would love to see a strong industry that would allow them to move back here, be creative, and to be uh, contributing to Alberta. We would also take a comprehensive inventory of all creative industry infrastructure throughout this province and share that information to help people find the places, the spaces, and the things they need to practice, perfect, and perform their craft. The theme of our election platform is Dream Bigger. Part of that is supporting our cultural industries to diversify our economy from supporting cultural education in schools to growing the industry to support our performers and producers to reach new heights. Thank you very much. Next up, Sandra Jansen, and she's with the Alberta Progressive Conservative Party and the candidate for Calgary Northwest. Thank you. I am so pleased to be able to take part in this arts vote forum on behalf of Minister Klimchuk, who couldn't be here, and she sends her apologies. And I want to say that the arts and culture section, uh, sector in Alberta is so near and dear to my heart, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I'm actually probably at this table the only current professional artist, so I know of what I speak. I am a professional acrylic artist and I've donated in the last five years since I've been back in Calgary about 60 pieces to local charities. My father and my sister paint, my brother is a professional musician. We are 
a family that really embraces the creative will. And I'm so proud that our government does the same. In the last five years, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts has handed out more than $209 million in grant monies, and for 2012 and 2013, that number is almost $28 million. We are very, very excited about the promise of the Canto Center, the decidedly jazz studio that breaks ground soon, our amazing Alberta Ballet, our CPO, and so much more. Now, in February, the Ministry of Culture and Community Services hosted a forum that had almost 400 arts and culture stakeholders involved, and that input in an online survey was additional to that. And we found opportunity absolutely everywhere in the results of the surveys and of that meeting. We have a very rich cultural fabric in Alberta. We need our artists, we need our writers, our publishers, we need our nonprofits, our volunteers. We need, simply put, we need our vibrant arts culture and our, our cultural scene in this province. And as a government, we will do everything we can to make sure that it thrives. Thank you. Sandra Jansen. The next candidate is Len Skronot, uh, sorry, Skor Skoronsky, Len Skoronsky, and he's with the Alberta Social Credit Party. Len. Thanks. Fellow Albertans, the Alberta Social Credit Party emphasizes that artists are in the entertainment business. Artists should be trained and mentored to become entrepreneurs. Business courses should be included in the art school's curriculum. Artists should be taught how to identify potential sponsors and convince them to provide funds to support their endeavors. Calgary has an abundance of very wealthy corporations and individuals who, if approached properly, would be pleased to support the budding artist. Marketing training and mentoring should be provided to assist artists to get seed capital to develop their projects and sell them to the public. Sometimes artists have to produce goods and services that match current taste to the public even though these do not satisfy their creative instincts. By selling this bread and butter produce, they will be able to support themselves and fund more creative experimental projects. The establishment of arts cooperatives should be encouraged to provide facilities for the artists to create and market their wares. Also, more must be done to encourage all Albertans to participate in and appreciate creative arts. This must begin in K-12 schools where more time should be spent teaching and promoting the arts, especially in the choral speech and acting arts. In conclusion, we must encourage all Albertans to participate in the arts and help arts professionals help themselves. Thank you. Len Skoronsky. Next, William Hamilton, Evergreen Party of Alberta, and he's a candidate for Calgary Elder. Thank you, Russell, and uh, thank you as well to Artsvote for allowing me to share our evergreen vision with a capacity, enthusiastic, standing room only crowd. This is fantastic. Calgarians understand and cherish how important it is to draw strength from our diversity and to participate in the creation of our culture. Whether we find our inspiration in the cinema, the theater, the printed page, or the gallery, we know instinctively that our stories are worth telling. Our songs are worth singing. Our vision is worth seeing. Our ideas are worth sharing. Creating our communities is one of the cornerstones of the Evergreen platform. For 40 years, your arts and culture policy has been dictated by backroom operatives and bureaucrats. Arts and culture are far more than the nice-to-haves some folks would have you believe. The impulse to create and to have our works and ideas resonate far beyond the world we leave behind us is encoded in our DNA. It's nurtured in every society that humanity has found worthy of the name. It's what leaves our legacy from cave paintings to the present day, 
It stands to reason that this fundamental human impulse is far too important to be left to the devices of a governmental silo whose only function it is to consume the time, energy, and money of the creators it purports to serve. It's bad faith, it's bad management, and it's the exact opposite of the prudent stewardship of your culture and your legacy that you have the right to expect in Alberta. The Evergreen Party of Alberta will back Alberta's artists. We will fund the arts at arm's length to maintain the autonomy and self-expression that our creators critically need. We will also ensure that the arts are ingrained in our communities through support for local theater and through support for arts programs and education, promoting lifelong learning and participation in the arts. Smarter culture, smarter creator support, and smarter planning for the legacy we leave with our talents, our evergreen values, your values. Thank you. Um, William Hamilton. Our next uh, and final speaker, Mike Blanchard, who's with the Wild Rose Alliance, and he's the candidate for Calgary Buffalo. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this afternoon. It's good to see that there are this many people that are interested in uh, what should be a vibrant community in this province. The value of arts and culture is really about quality of life. Now, in a day and age where we have governments that are under increasing pressure to reduce spending and decrease taxes, Arts and culture are often some of the uh, first areas that political uh, leaders tend to look at when they swing the, the budget cutting acts. Now I think this approach is short-sighted. Uh, yes, we need to balance priorities, we have to uh, essentially uh, not spend more than we have, but at the same time, vibrant communities are more than bricks and mortar. Uh, great musical, theatrical and other artistic events and institutions that enhance our quality of life also add to the economic boost that tourism provides to Alberta's economy, and that cannot be overlooked. So we need to find ways that we can encourage and attract talented artists to stay in Alberta. World-class artists are some of the best ambassadors that we have, better than any political um, delegation. You know, Jan Arden being from Calgary, for example, gets a lot of attention. We don't hear about our political leaders uh, going overseas uh, that often. One of the greatest needs of any arts project is funding and volunteers. Right now, from a dollars and cents point of view, it's greater for donors to give money to a political candidate and a political party than it is to cultural institutions. And something's wrong about that. Wild Rose would increase the tax credit that groups who fund arts and culture to be at least or more generous than those offered to political parties. I think that would encourage people to put their money into where their priorities are. Thank you. Mike Blanchard. Well, we have seven questions that have been developed by Arts Vote Calgary, and these, these questions have been prepared in consultation with the arts community. And what's going to happen is I'm going to ask these seven questions, and each of these candidates will have an opportunity to respond to one specific question as a first response. And if once, the, once that two minute uh, response is up, they'll have an opportunity then to either respond or rebut uh, what was said. So basically, every candidate here will have an opportunity to be heard on three of these questions. And to help me, uh, guide them in their time. Uh, she's already been hard at work here already. I have Suzanne here from the library and she has a card and she'll be letting them know uh, how much time they have inside of their two minutes and when their time is up. And uh, for the rebuttals and responses, uh, those that time allotment is one minute. So you'll be given about 20 seconds notice when your time is ending from uh, Suzanne here. And uh, so we'll start this off. Basically, how this is going to work, I'll ask a question. You can just raise a red card if you want to be a first response on this. And in the case of more than one red card going up, I will simply just pick whoever I saw first. So our first question, and this is a two-parter, actually. In your opinion, what is the provincial government's role in supporting the arts in Alberta? And what is the primary benefit of this support to Albertans, and the first card I saw was David Swan. Thank you very much. The arts to me is about health, it's about balance. I look at my own life and I see the way that the arts have contributed to my mental well-being, my ability to contribute to society, uh, my overall sense of 
quality of life. Uh, there's no question in my mind that my early experiences in school where school was funded for band, for, for artistic endeavors, for community visits to different artists has had a significant impact on who I've become as a person. I'm not sure uh, what I'd do without my music and my love of singing. Uh, it's become uh, a real source of strength and an and important way of communicating uh, not only with others, but with my inner self. So, government's role, clearly, a healthy, sustainable society. Government has a fundamental role, then, in the arts, and developing the capacities of people to express themselves and, in, in so many different ways, and to reach each other, connect, uh, develop community, uh, sustain support for certain values, and challenge certain in inequities and problems in our systems. These are the fundamental the roles of government, in my view, to think of the long term and ensure we put in the groundwork for all of us, uh, especially those who are most disadvantaged, to try to reach their potential. Uh, I performed, I, I shouldn't say I performed, I presented with La Caravan last weekend, a wonderful experience for me, uh, expressing some of the values around a better, better Alberta in political terms and having these wonderful young dancers express those same views through movement and expression. It was a real awakening for me, too, of the connection between, the close connection and a powerful connection between the arts and politics and how we must bring those together. Thank you. Right. David Swan. Now, to be fair, we will allow for, two, uh, for a couple of responses on that So, uh, from the other candidates. So what we'll do, just to be fair, we'll just ask you if you've got a yellow card in your hand, you put that up. First one I saw was the NDP. So go ahead, Mark. So, uh, as I said, we see the arts as a fundamental good, and I think uh, we've basically said in the, with the NDP that we believe that we should raise the funding of the Alberta Foundation for Arts to $90 million in four years, um, so that we can make sure that there is funding for, for artists who need help. Um, the, they always talk, you know, we've seen government slash and burn, you know, the Wild Rose is telling us that they don't plan to do so, but the slash and burn politics have worked in, you know, it's been in BC, it's been in Saskatchewan, it's been in Canada as a whole. We, we can't trust conservatives to, to, to take care of the arts. So for us, we see arts as a tremendous, you know, there's a tremendous return on investment. They studied it, and it's, for every dollar that the government invests in art, they get one dollar, dollar fifty back in return in taxes. Uh, so there's no reason we should ever be cutting our arts. It, it leads to safer streets. It leads to more engaged kids. It leads to more engaged citizens. It leads to beautifying our cities and our province. And every time we cut it, we're setting ourselves backwards, economically, socially, and in every other possible way. Our power and. We have a second response on that from uh, Mike Blanchard from the Wild Rose. I think some parties are easy targets when it comes to arts funding, arts and culture, Wild Rose being one. I think that it's uh, easy to fear monger and say that uh, so-called political right parties uh, would make uh, first cuts in, in an arts thing. Well, you know, it's easy to say, but that's not true. Uh, Wild Rose is one party, for example, that thinks we need a vibrant uh, arts and cultural community in this province. And I want to use the film industry as just one example. There are many great examples that we can look at, but the film industry uh, specifically one. Uh, the current government has made it difficult for talented Albertans to remain here at home. I've got a lot of friends, acquaintances who work in this industry, and the uncertainty that they face is tremendous. And unfortunately, many have to leave this province to look for better opportunities Many film projects choose other provinces because they simply can't get it here. The Alberta government has failed to use tax credits to offer that it has in other jurisdictions. I think if we're going to attract uh, healthy, vibrant communities, healthy, vibrant industries, cultural industries, we need to create a system, incentivize these industries to come to Alberta. A, a tax credit one, for, for example, for the film industry is just one way to do this. I think we can look at that, creating a volunteer tax credit to to get people to come out and work for them, pardon me, uh, would be another. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's probably worth noting at this point that in many instances there was a, a fascinating uh, Statistics Canada report about artists in Canada, and I'm sure Alberta contributes more than its fair share to that study, but um, the average salary of an artist in Canada is $24,000. The average salary of a painter or visual artist is $8,000. And the average salary of a musician is $31,000. But as a collective, 
artists in this country contribute $3.7 billion in taxable income. Now, they're also amongst the, that's perfectly worth plotting, yes. Um, they're also amongst the best educated in our country. And so this next question for one of our uh, candidates. Do you feel that arts education at all levels of grade school and funding for arts programs at the post-secondary level are priorities? Could you state why or why not you feel that's the case? Sandra Jansen, political uh, progressive conservatives. Thank you so much for that. This is a this question really resonated with me because uh, I, I want to use my daughter as an example. When we moved back to Calgary in 2007, she was struggling a little bit in school, and when and when we moved her into a program that was arts based, that art related back to all of her curriculum, it related back to her science classes and her math classes and everything she did, she became so engaged in her classroom activities that she went from a C student to an A student. That is the power of the engagement of, of students when they have something they love and they're passionate about. We did grow up in a family where art was extremely important to all of us, and that's why I think making that linkage for children at an early age is so important. I think that that funding for arts programs and making that link with the curriculum in, in the school years is something that is crucial for our children. They grow up in a world with art, they grow up with an understanding of art and appreciation of the value of it in every part of our lives. This is something I think that is so important. I believe that we have a government that absolutely understands that art is crucial to the curriculum, not just in elementary, junior high, and high school, but ongoing and post-secondary education. And I think you're seeing that commitment from this government. Thank you. Thank you, Jensen. So we have time for one minute responses to that. And the first card I see is from William Hamilton, Evergreen Party. Thank you, Russell. Um, it's an interesting question that you've put forward to us, but uh, I would take it one step further. Arts education at the grade school level is important. Arts education in the post-secondary system is important. Arts education as a tool for lifelong learning is essential. We need to be able to create an environment, to create a sphere, so to speak, in which every Albertan has the opportunity at any time to learn and to appreciate what it is that, what tools we have for communicating with, with each other. Thank you. William Hamilton from the Evergreen. And I believe Len had a second card up there on that one. So, Len, did you want to take your time? Yes, I think we need to spend a lot more time in the K-12 school on, on, on the arts, especially in certain, certain parts of the arts. And as I mentioned in my uh, opening speech, especially the choral speech and acting arts. Now in Canada, very few people sing. You know, you, you go to uh, some event like a football game or somebody and a lot of people don't even sing Oh Canada. They seem to be ashamed to sing. They, don't, they have not developed their choral ability. You go to a football game in Europe and people sing. Here they do the wave, you know. <laughs> Singing just just has not uh, caught on, and I think we're really missing something by not teaching our people to enjoy our main instrument, our voice. Thanks. Thank you, Len, Len Skoransky. And uh, I shouldn't make mention of this because I, I omitted it from my uh, comments earlier, but I just want to make mention that Len is the candidate for uh, Calgary Hawkwood. All right. So we'll move on to our third question, and if we have time later, we will get a song in, so. <laughs> our next question. What will you do to ensure consistent and reliable funding for the arts sector? <laughs> I'll continue the question for Gonzaga. All right, what new strategies will you use or your party use to leverage existing provincial support? Now you can put your cards up. First, first card I saw was Mike Blanchard from Wild. Well, like a lot of other things, I think we need to get the politics out of arts funding. Uh, a lot of times we uh, use it as a leverage 
a lot of our political leaders will, will fund a project, uh, fund uh, a sector based on how it looks publicly for them, the, uh, well, the, the amount of votes they think that will score for them in four-year cycles. And unfortunately, it's these four-year political cycles that uh, often hurt not just the arts sector, but many other sectors. I think that we need to offer a series of tax incentives uh, that will get uh, some vibrant cultural and artistic communities uh, working in this province. Uh, we need to, uh, that alone will help uh, get people working in these industries. And as uh, we were certainly, you know, to hear about what Russell had to offer about the, uh, the, the economic input that these put in, uh, that these people who are working in these industries put in, it, it can be a very vibrant sector. Another thing that's hard in addition to funding is volunteers. Uh, many nonprofit organizations struggle to find volunteers. Wild Rose is pushing for a volunteer tax credit. That would allow uh, volunteers, people who spend time in uh, nonprofit sectors, uh, volunteering their valuable time, could essentially receive a tax credit for that. That would create a powerful incentive to help get people to you know, put their hard-earned time in as well. So I think we need to get the, the political decision-making out of uh, what uh, you know, how the funding works for many of these industries. If we can do that, if we can let these industries create uh, themselves at an arm's length from government, I think they'll be much more, uh, well, much better off. Uh, part of that includes uh, the, the, the community program funding that uh, we would create for municipalities because these decisions are best made at a local level rather than being made in Edmonton by provincial governments. Thank you. All right, we have time for one minute responses. And the first card I see is from Kevin Warren. Well, the Alberta Party, we've been uh, creating our policies through doing things called the Big Listen, where we actually sit down with stakeholders. Some of the things we'd like to do, uh, and me, I speak from being the Secretary of Treasurer at CGSW Radio, and we know what it goes through. Year-to-year -year funding doesn't seem to... You spend more time doing paperwork than doing what you should be doing. So part of it, we work with stakeholders to establish a more sustainable funding model with three-year funding commitments to arts and culture organizations. We would also seek to reduce some of the restrictions under the um, uh, lottery funding that a lot of arts groups, especially at the community level, are, are going on, especially when it comes to things like spending the money within two years. Thank you very, very much. All right. And our second response, David Swan. Thank you. Well, the foundation here, I think, has to be uh, a recognition that all citizens have to have access to training and and opportunities for learning and experiencing the arts. We believe in the Alberta Liberal Party that we have to eliminate school fees so that musical experiences, all kinds of artistic experiences are not dependent on the ability of people to pay. In terms of stable funding for the arts and, and uh, these important contributions they make both aesthetically and financially to this province, you have to begin with a fair tax system. This government refuses to establish a fair, progressive tax system. The Alberta Liberals would increase, in the top 10% of earners in Alberta, we would increase uh, the tax system between 2 and 3%. Corporations in Alberta would pay another 3%. We need to have stable funding for uh, the foundations of, of our healthy society and education, health care, and supports for people with disabilities. We do not have that today. We will therefore not have stable funding for things like the arts. Thank you, David Swan. Okay, so we'll move along to our fourth question. The current government has indicated that a cultural agenda should be integrated into all departments of the provincial government. Do you agree with this? And if so, how would this be implemented? What impact would this have on the Ministry of Cultural and community services, and obviously if you disagree, you can also state that as well. Um, first red card on that one. And I believe we've already had a red card from you, Sandra, as a first responder, so we'll have to take it from someone else. Everyone's eager on this one. <laughs> Am I gonna have to pick someone? Do it. Why don't we uh, get a first response from um, Mark Power of the Alberta NDP. Well, absolutely. We, we you can't, every, you know, department has to have the, the, under, uh, the underlying principle that diversity and, uh, my 
goodness. This is the one I didn't want. This <laughs> 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 is the most difficult one. Um, if we get through all seven, eventually there's one left. Absolutely perfect. All right, yeah, that's, I think it, it is absolutely crucial that we have, uh, that our government operates with the basis that diversity is throughout in every single uh, department that exists. So when it comes to finance and health, we do look at ways that we can encourage more and more uh, thought of then in, you know, take, take more cons uh, consideration with arts and other cultures and other communities and bring them all together so we can actually have more input at the table rather than the government coming down and telling each department how things are done. Thank you. Mark Howard, NDB. So we do have uh, one minute responses on that. So Sandra, you seem keen, so I'll let you go first. It is a difficult question. Okay, um, here's an example, public art. It's so important, it enriches all our lives. Um, we have some excellent leadership in Edmonton and Calgary on this particular issue. Uh, we need a public uh, art policy that's province-wide, and we have some amazing people at the City of Calgary who are, are working on public art right now. I've had a chance to work with them in the past. They're fantastic. Engaging Albertans in those choices is not just putting statues up of horses in public places. It's music and literature and dance. And if we can work together, we can make an absolutely amazing cultural scene explode. Not just in our theaters and, and in those avenues, but out in the public where we can all enjoy it and democratize the art process. <laughs> For, uh, one, one more response or rebuttal on that point? All right, well, somebody's saving their card for another question. All right. So we'll move along to our fifth question. <laughs> Someone knows what's coming. All right. An affordable community is a basic tool for cultural vibrancy, allowing artists and arts organizations to withstand highs and lows. So what will you or your party do to ensure a reasonable cost of living? Anyone? Anyone? William Hamilton, Evergreen? Thank you, Russell. The arts are important enough that we have to understand and we have to implement ways of making life easier for artists. I mean, you heard the numbers from Russell on the income that various classes of artists obtain, and you look at what they deliver for Alberta over the course of a year. One of the first things the Evergreen Party of Alberta will do is implement a provincial income tax averaging system for artists. We know that there are good years and there are lean years, and artists should not be penalized for selling that sculpture, for mounting that play, and then having to work through that next year or two, coming up with that next big project. The other thing the Evergreens will do is implement a tax-free earnings threshold for creative endeavors. We know that uh, sometimes when times are tough for artists, uh, people take on jobs to survive. But when that project comes through, you need to know that you will not be penalized for surviving and then giving us the opportunity to thrive. So thank you. All right. You do have a, a little more time if you'd like to take it. You have a full two minutes. Anything else you want to add? No, that will be Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, so uh, we can uh, accommodate responses to that, and I'll start with Mark Power. <laughs> so uh, as I've knocked on about 4,500 doors, the most common thing I do here on the doorstep is how expensive this city's become. For especially people on fixed incomes and seniors, They've been hit the hardest every time we see a major spike in our bills, especially things like our power bills. Some people have seen tripling of their power bills. So people like artists who don't necessarily have, a, you know, can't have a very specific budget that they have to operate it through, get hit really, really hard. So our government's talk, uh, our party's talking about when we form government that we will actually re-regulate our power system. We're going to look at tuition, making sure that we uh, and lower tuition for everybody help out with people who have student loans, uh, who graduate from art school and have big debt and are trying to pay everything. We can help them out with actually t paying off their debt so they can actually uh, do art full time rather than have to pick up a second job. Because so I think that in the end, that really benefits everybody. Thank you, Mark. And um, we can get one more response in on this because we only had one for the last one. So I'll start with Sandra because I saw hers first. We have the lowest taxes in the country in Alberta. 
We have the highest disposable incomes here, and those are recipes for a vibrant cultural scene. We have a government that supports critical, critical infrastructure like highways and LRTs, especially LRTs so that people can get around. We have a supportive province, we have the will, and we have the disposable income. It is an excellent recipe for more people taking part in the cultural experience, more people buying art, more people going out to see the theater. And I think that is not about to change in the near future. We are very lucky for that in this province. Thank you. So if you're keeping score at home, um, we have two questions left and they, as a first response, they are open to either Mr. Warren or Mr. Espinowski. And in terms of who can chime in on rebuttals, um, Mr. Power and Ms. Jansen have used up both their rebuttals at this point. So our sixth question. Do you think that urban and rural constituencies require different approaches to arts and culture? And if so, what do you feel those differences are? Kevin. There certainly is a difference between uh, rural and uh, urban constituencies. Obviously, first and foremost, one of those is venues. Where, to pre where the cultural industries can actually show or perform. Uh, a little easier in the urban areas, uh, not so much in the rural. And part of our plan is to be able to create a funding scenario which will allow the smaller communities around Alberta to enjoy the same high-class art, dance, theater, music as the urban centers do by creating an, a, a way to get those artists out to the communities to be able to perform in the smaller places. Location shouldn't be a restriction to enjoying cultural industries in this province and we think we can help out the artists and the communities at the same time. That all goes back to being able to create a situation where artists can stay in the province, thrive in the pr province and make a living here. Other kind of items too, uh, it goes back to taking our cultural inventory, finding out where these places are and being able to share that through the Alberta Foundation for the Arts or like C CADA and being able to fund some of the events that are happening in the smaller smaller areas. We have a great music festival called Alberta's Own up in Benalto, Alberta. A little bit of seed money at the start of that could have, could have helped them get through their first three years of, of incredible costs of startup and create a festival that celebrates Alberta musicians from all genres, all types, and be able to promote that across the province to get people to go to Benalto create something they're great and something we can all be proud of. Thank you. Kevin Warren, thank you. And so we have time for responses and rebuttals on that. We'll start with Len uh, Skoronsky. Yes, I think uh, people in the rural areas have a difficulty to come to main events. It's mainly travel time. And uh, if there's a major event in the Jubilee or in, in the uh, Singer, theater or whatever, again, it costs them a lot. I, with modern technology, that, that could be solved. I would see that many of these should be live broadcasted over a television station uh, that is, say, government supported. And uh, maybe there could be a cost or maybe it could just be free because those poor guys out in the farms, they uh, can't uh, get it here, so maybe they should be able to see these free. So I think with modern technology, we could have a better sharing of cultural events. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And we have time for another response on that point, the urban-rural divide on uh, culture, arts and culture. All right, well, we'll save it up for the last question. Uh, and Len, you will be first responder on this. It's been said that Calgary suffers from inadequate arts and cultural infrastructure. Too few facilities. The ones we do have are old and unrepresentative of a modern, diverse society and creative talent. How do you or your party plan to address this? Okay, I'm proud to be the leader of the party that uh, built the two Jubilee Auditoria. Now, these have been the two major facilities in Alberta that were built 
to celebrate our 50th anniversary of being a province in, in 1955. In our 100th anniversary, uh, the current government did a little bit of work on revamping them, but they didn't do anything new. I think, uh, first of all, the arts community really has to come up and lobby. What do they want? What is it that you want new? And I think money can be fine, not just from the government, but, but again, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of wealthy corporations and people that could uh, chip in. You know, if, if we can consider a new hockey rink, for God's sake, we can certainly build new theaters or ballet uh, or opera, opera houses or whatever. So first, I would urge all of you arts people to really come up with some sort of a plan. What is it that you want? And then uh, also come up with a plan. How should this be financed? Thanks. Lance Krawanski, and um, just so for just so in terms of accounting, as we this as this is our last question, Mr. Swan, Mr. Warren, Mr. Hamilton, and Mr. Blanchard all have the opportunity to uh, have a rebuttal on that question and uh, chime in on that topic. So uh, I think I saw Mr. Swan's card first. So. Thanks. I think we have some wonderful infrastructure here, and I, w I dare say that many of the artists I talk to are not concerned about locations. They're concerned about a quality of life for themselves and the ability to, to do their work and to be, have that work shared broadly. We have a lot of venues uh, across the city that could be double serviced as community, community organizations, churches, uh, wonderful facilities that are not being used to their maximum. I think the big issue is a government that fails its people by continuing the boom-bust economy that cripples everyone uh, at the lower ends of the spectrum, especially artists. We need a government that's willing to take some control over the development of the oil sands, develop them in a sustainable way environmentally and socially and economically, provide some stability in our financial base in terms of our tax base so that we're not spending more than we take in. And we are presently in a $5 billion deficit again this year because this government wants to have the, the priority of the lowest taxing place on the planet and, and starve some of the lowest income people uh, and the, the most needy people in our province, including the artists. This has to change. This government has to be changed. And that's my final comment. David Swan. <laughs> Mr. Blanchard. Actually, I think David makes some interesting points, uh, but we need to take a bit of a realistic approach here, too. Uh, yes, there are a lot of facilities that are underutilized schools, community centers, and I think that we could see more shared resources in places like that. But we also have to prioritize where we want these venues, and that needs to be made by the public, by you and I as a whole, not by politicians looking to get the best bang for the buck on a political cycle. We need a priority list that is not being put together by some backroom cabinet in the legislature in Edmonton. We need a priority list that is being put together by people like you and I, what facilities that we need, because infrastructure is not just bridges and sewage plants, it is also the, the very venues that we want to enjoy the artistic community in this province. We also need a maintenance schedule that puts money aside to upgrade these facilities as they age. Right now that money is pulled from general funding when they find the need for it. We need a maintenance schedule that puts money aside long term so that these facilities continue to serve us in the years to come. Thank you. Mike Blanchard. Anyone else want to chime in on that? Kevin? Again, I, I referenced it earlier that we would want to take an entire inventory of cultural industries, facilities, and take a look around. There are schools that can be used by community organizations. There are community centers. The problem is, is that we don't know what's available, and arts groups need to find that out. We have to share that information and be able to get them into these places to do the rehearsals, to set, if there's an unused space in the community center, why not set up a community artist in residence program? Bring somebody, put a place where artists can go to paint, to do their craft, to sit and write poetry for, with Chris Demeanor. There, there are ideas out there and we're willing to hear them and share them. And that's the biggest thing we have to talk. Okay. And uh, William, you do have an opportunity for the last word on this question. Thank you, Russell. And it, it is indeed going to be the last word on our program today. So. Uh, Basically, I would reiterate uh, what everyone at this table seems to agree on. We need to find a strategy and we need to develop a plan. 
for renovating and adaptively reusing the spaces that we have in all cities, towns, and villages in this province to provide the infrastructure and to provide the safe and useful spaces that artists need to communicate their vision to Albertans. And we also need to work strongly with our cities, our towns, our villages, and our counties to create incentives in both urban and rural locales to retain and attract artists. And a proper artistic infrastructure strategy will do that. So thank you. Thank you. Now, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, we had budgeted, I think, somewhere upwards of, of 90 minutes for this discussion today. And who knew that seven politicians would finish early? <laughs> it must be early in the campaign. So uh, I'm going to call an audible here, and I'm going to allow each of the uh, candidates to have 30 seconds to make the case for their candidature or for their party. And while you compose a moment to uh, think of what you'd like to say in your uh, 30 seconds, uh, I would like to pass along my own thanks to the Calgary Public Library for making this space and this opportunity available for us to gather and uh, share these ideas. And I would like to thank um, Paul and Ashley and everybody at uh, Calgary Arts Votes for developing the questions and sponsoring this debate. And I would like to thank our, obviously our candidates for taking the time to be here. On behalf of CBC, CBC Radio, I know that the arts are an important aspect of what we do. And it's my pleasure to be part of this debate and this discussion today. And hopefully, you can join in that discussion with, uh, obviously, the things that we're doing through the CBC. And there is one thing, if you'd like to discuss or find out for yourself some of the issues that are going on in this campaign and being explored by the parties, uh, there is Vote Compass, which you can find on the cbc.ca slash Calgary website. And uh, you can uh, take part in that discussion as well. Uh, there are some other candidates who uh, aren't on our dais but uh, did take the time to be here today. I would just like to recognize them uh, as they're here. Uh, first of all, we have some uh, Senate candidates uh, in the audience, and that is Doug Black from the PC Party, <laughs> Paul Frank, an independent candidate, Ian Burkhart, uh, an independent candidate as well. And from uh, some of the uh, 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 from the Alberta Liberal Party, we have Corey Mack, sorry, uh, oh. Christopher Than from the Alberta Liberal Party, and yeah. Stephanie Shuchuk from the Alberta Liberal Party, yeah. and Corey Mack from the Alberta Party. A normal order. Normal order. Excellent. Thank you very much for attending, and. Um, and I'm sure the candidates would be more than happy to spend some time with you after the uh, formal uh, program is broken up and uh, you can ask them some questions directly if there's anything you want to ask them about. So uh, we'll do this in reverse order of uh, their opening statement. So I'll start with Mike Blanchard from Wild Rose uh, Alliance and the candidate for Calgary Buffalo. Thank you again. I think that our arts community, culture communities are vibrant when people participate. We need to find ways to encourage uh, even more, greater participation than perhaps we have now. Uh, one of the things that Wild Rose has uh, encouraged with its family-friendly policy is a $500 children's arts, sports, culture tax credit, and it's aimed at getting kids into the arts earlier, and it helps stimulate making a living off of the arts because we'll need more instructors. Uh, as these kids are taking programs as well. As I stated earlier, I think that Albertans are far better ambassadors uh, than any politician when they have uh, an opportunity to represent us abroad. And I think we've got to find ways to keep talented uh, producers, talented artists in this province. Thank you. Mike Blanchard, thank you. Next, William Hamilton, Evergreen Party of Canada and the, uh, or sorry, Evergreen Party of Alberta and the candidate for Calgary, Elba. Thank you, Russell. It's been a fantastic event and I can tell you that in our city and in our world, the loud, proud and distinctive artistic and cultural voice of Calgary is yearning more than ever to be heard. And there's been a lot of sudden enthusiasm for consultation and input solicitation and concerted stakeholder engagement. But the time has come for Alberta artists and Alberta voters to seek action. We're ever ready, ever green, and we're willing to act on your behalf. So thank you for your support and thank you for your time today. William Hamilton. 
Next, Len Skoronsky, Alberta Social Credit Party and the candidate for Calgary Hopwood. Albertans have a lot to their credit. We have an abundant amount of resources. We have a cultural heritage that has given us very educated and uh, intelligent, talented people. If we took control of our credits, we would provide for our social needs such as the arts. One example is that we are not getting full value for our oil sands. We are get, losing $40 a barrel by not upgrading instead of selling bitumen, which is coming to $25 million a year. If we had that in our economy, we would have more than enough money to support our arts. Thank you. Len Skowanski. Next, Sandra Jansen, Alberta Progressive Conservative Party and the candidate for Calgary Northwest. Thank you. I just want to leave you with this. Uh, Calgary currently has the largest critical infrastructure build in Canada going on, part of a 10-year plan with the city of Calgary. This is an amazing frontier. We have Cantos on the books, the Decidedly Jazz Studio, the National Music Centre and Folk Hall. There is a lot to look forward to and further afield, the Royal Alberta Museum. These are important projects to the government and important projects for the people of this province and we look forward to seeing all of them come to completion. Thank you. Sandra Jones. Next, Kevin Warren, Alberta Party and the candidate for Calgary Hawkwood. Cultural industries are one of the most democratizing things that we do in this province. When you go to enjoy a play or music, it doesn't matter if you're a CEO or if you're a store clerk. It doesn't matter. You're all the same as the audience. Support of cultural industries in this province is one of the easiest ways we can help diversify our economy and grow our, our culture. It's the things that we have to do. It's the easiest way. For every dollar we put in, we get more than that back many times over and I would say take a look at our policies online and, and let us hear what you think because that's how we make good decisions. Kevin Warren and next Mark Power Alberta's New Democratic Party and a Calgary uh, candidate for Calgary Club. Uh, Calgary wants to be a first-class city and a first-class city is a is a city built upon culture and art. Art is the very essence of of a moving, progressive city, and it's important that we have a, a province that fights and has enthusiasm for building the arts in our province. So we've talked about doing things like making sure we have capital funding for, for building the buildings. We have long-term funding to support the artists, that we pass the status of the artist legislation so we can codify the, the rights of artists to make money and, and bargain effectively. So the New Democrats are passionate about the arts. We want to be your champion, and we will be your champion. Thank you. Mark Power, thank you. And finally, David Swan, Alberta Liberal Party and the candidate for Calgary Mountain View. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you today. Thanks again to the library for this visionary effort to bring us together. I reiterate what I said earlier. Politicians need light and heat to do our jobs. We have a dying democracy in this province. Uh, only two out of five people voted in the last election. Totally unacceptable. I'm not sure whether that's despair or apathy. We are all part of the next Alberta. This is the most important election coming up in our, in our century, this 21st century. I hope you'll get engaged and raise the level of awareness. Get behind somebody you believe and, and fund them, volunteer for them. Let's change the government in Alberta for the first time in 41 years. It's time for change. It was mentioned to you uh, earlier in the uh, proceedings, but we have uh, a Twitter account that you can uh, take part in. So as you head home today and get involved in the political process, it's at ArtsVoteYYC, at ArtsVoteYYC. And you can also uh, include the hashtag, uh, uh, little number sign, ABVote, so hashtag ABVote. And you can also uh, see some of this video on artsvotecalgary.ca. That's available there as well. In the meantime, for any of you who up, happen to be up between 6 and 9 a.m. on a Saturday and Sunday morning, you're certainly welcome to join me on the radio on CBC. And thank you for being part of this today. Thank you, candidates. And have a pleasant rest of your day. And happy election.